Hey everybody, my name is Blackjack, and welcome to my playthrough for Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time, or rather just Sly Thieves in Time, as the, uh, the case says. The case of Sly Thieves in Time, the actual in-game says Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, so I think that's, I don't know what the title is, we're gonna go with the Sly Thieves in Time. Uh, I'm just gonna go with what the case says, <laughs> instead of what the gun says. And uh, I just always liked that the PS3 had these little, like, vignettes that you get to see before, like, you open up a game. And has usually a lot of them have, like, music to uh, music to them or whatever. So that's pretty cool. I don't remember if the Xbox 360 did anything like that. Um, I'll double check when I, when I do Assassin's Creed 2 next. Or, like, I'll reaffirm. But I don't remember if it did that. Anyway. <laughs> so, yes, welcome to Sly Cooper. Thank you time. Uh, this is going to be a 30, I think it's 33 or 34 part playthrough, um, not including the bonus, which is going to be like 35 parts. Uh, and we're going to be tackling 100%. Uh, so I'm just going to double check to make sure all my settings are right. Um, the most important one to me is going to be subtitles, which you can find in the game section right here. Uh, it is on, I don't think it's usually off, but I... Sometimes I like to double track with games. Um, the cross save is a feature that happens on the PS3. Here's my failed recording. <laughs> I started a recording segment and forgot to record it. <laughs> um, but uh, cross save is on the PS Vita, you got to continue your playthrough. Um, so instead of like starting on the PS3 and then continuing from the PS3, you can start on the PS3 and then go on the PS Vita. It's pretty cool at the time. Um, I don't have a PS Vita, so I never really used the cross save. This is going to be the only load time, by the way, in the entire game. I'm going to cut them all out. Um, I'm going to be saving you guys like at least an hour's worth of your life not watching <laughs> all the loading times. But the loading times in this game are, are god awful. And we're going to be watching the full story. So hope you guys enjoy the, uh, the background knowledge. See you all in a second. Oh, yeah. Bottle, treasure, saves, mask, trophies. Oh, well, not trophies, but the other four we're all going to be collecting everything. I should probably just start at the beginning. The name's Sly. Sly Cooper, and I'm a thief. From a long line of thieves. In fact, thieving is the family business. And business was good. Although, until recently, I considered myself retired. Having hung up my mask and cane, I was enjoying life on the other side of the law. In the company of a certain lovely Interpol agent named Carmelita Fox. She and I had a history, which generally involved her trying to lock me up. So I should mention our current situation was only possible because she thought I had amnesia. I didn't. It was great to finally enjoy each other's company without a shock pistol being involved, and we quickly put the past behind us. But as time went on, the old itch came back, and I knew I needed to pull a heist. I should also mention that as a master thief, I only steal from other thieves. So it took me a while, but I finally found what I was looking for. My target was an upstart art mogul, a real hotshot collector. He seemed respectable, had even opened a new museum. But I could smell a rat. Reliable sources told me he was dealing in black market antiques worth millions. So I felt he should share the wealth. I was working on a plan when one night, as if on cue, Bentley showed up. Bentley was the brains of our operation, the mastermind. We grew up in the same orphanage where we bonded over stealing cookies, our very first heist. And we've been best friends and partners ever since. We hadn't seen each other for a while, but I knew immediately that something was up. Bentley had been enjoying his time off too, building a new lab from scratch with his girlfriend and fellow tech whiz, Penelope. She had joined the team on our last caper and the two of them had really hit it off. Apparently they just finished work on a top secret project when Penelope had simply vanished. Bentley was worried sick 
He searched frantically but found nothing. Then he noticed something that completely stunned him. In his spare time, Bentley had been researching the Thievius Raccoonus, the Master Thieves Handbook passed down through the Cooper family for generations. Its pages overflowing with the exploits and secret techniques of my esteemed ancestors. Only now, those pages weren't so full. In fact, they were disappearing right before Bentley's eyes. Realizing there was no time to waste, he gathered his gear and raced off to Paris. The first thing Bentley did was track down Murray, the third in our trio. Murray was our enforcer, the muscle, and the guy who'd eaten all the cookies we stole back in our orphanage days. Through the years, the three of us had become an unbeatable team, and we were more like a family now than a gang. Murray had been living his dream on the pro driving circuit, where his van had become famous, or rather infamous, for all the crashes he'd caused. Eventually, he was unable to find a sponsor due to his high insurance premiums, and he moved into Demolition Derby, where he remained undefeated. When Bentley showed up, however, Murray dropped everything to help out. Especially when Bentley explained that his van was the key to the whole plan. With Carmelita distracted by a new assignment, I took the opportunity to slip away and met up with the guys at our old Paris hideout. Bentley launched into one of his elaborate presentations, and I saw the whole scary picture. Someone, or something, was literally erasing Cooper history. Then, to our amazement, Bentley revealed that he already had the solution, time travel. It turns out his top secret project was constructing a time machine. And now, he modified the design to fit into Murray's van. We were going to travel back in time stop those responsible, and fix the damage they'd done. Bentley explained the only catch was that in order to travel to a particular time, the machine required an object from that era. We knew from the changes to the Thievius Raccoonus that our first stop was feudal Japan. So here we were, about to steal a priceless 17th century samurai dagger from the same museum I'd been casing. Funny how things work out sometimes. Okay, you both remember the plan, right? Of course! My mind is like a steel cap! Uh, that's trap, big guy. And everybody relax. We've been over it a million times. What could possibly go wrong? Famous last words. Look, we're only gonna get one shot at this, so we can't mess up! All right, no messing up allowed. Now stop worrying. This is gonna be a piece of cake. I'll see you both inside. Now let's get going. <laughs> Sly Cooper, the thief. <laughs> Alrighty, boys. So, to so play this game, uh, it's your typical 3D platform. You have a jump button, you have an attack button. Um, Sly also has a triangle attack, which can be used for combos. If you hold it, you have a spin attack, and if you hold it even longer, you can do something else. Uh, that's not until an upgrade for later. Here are your two jump attacks with square and triangle being them. Circle is going to be your interaction button, which we're going to be using for anything like inspire jumps or rail running. God, I love Sly Cooper. <laughs> Just in general, I like the game series themselves. Um, I also love that the coins, and I explained this in the review too, but I love that the coins all change uh, like throughout every level, so that's just a really neat detail that since I decided to keep since the first game. And uh, yeah, Bentley has a 
Billings, right? We have a double drum, uh, standard throughout every game in the series. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna make most of our jumps for the most part. And I'm gonna try and collect as many coins as I can. Um, I, I want to, at the end of every level, to collect every upgrade. Um, for the most part, I think it's, it. Not that you don't. You don't really need every upgrade. I think. I think the only one that you necessarily need is gonna be the paraglide, which is the first one you're gonna get. Um, and I think you only need about a hundred for it anyway. So you don't have to like go out of your way. Oh yeah, and uh, there's gonna be a lot of instant fail moments in this game, like. The flashlight uh, sees you and you lose, or like you touch an electric beam, you lose or die. There's gonna be a lot of that in this game. Um, it's actually a thing I dislike a lot about this game. In Sly 1 in particular, um, or even in the older games too, but in Sly 1, you had like a grace period before you died. In, in, in Sly 1, there's like a yellow beam, and then if you trigger it, it turns red, and then the alarms go off, and everyone knows where you are and stuff. But if you hit the red one, that's when you get hurt and die. And in Sly 2 and hey, 3... Wait, was truck surfing part of Murray's entrance strategy? Of course not. Murray's approach route is through the back alleys. Why do you ask? <laughs> uh, no reason. Anyway, it looks like he's in position now. Uh, what was this thing? Hey, sure you stay on these cables, Sly. You can't risk going down to the... <laughs> <laughs> fucking Murray, yeah. Not a problem, Ben. A good thief prefers to stay above the action anyway. I, I love the animation of this game, man. They're so funny. Looks like the perfect night for a heist. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> oh yeah, in size 2 and 3, if you step into a spotlight, you just get hurt. Um, and then you can keep going until you die. So, like, it's weird that in this game they decided to just make it so that there's no, like, no, like, failure, uh... There's no, like, um, attempt to, to continue. It's just, like, you instantly die and here's the checkpoint. Because then it makes, like, all the checkpoints seem kind of useless, you know? Because the checkpoints themselves, they're not terrible. You you respawn very quickly. Um, so it's just, it's just odd to me. Well, anyway, we're, we're going to be collecting some more coins here. But around this ledge, I believe there should be an interesting dialogue sequence. Oh. It is not this one. Is that Murray? <laughs> Fucking do it, Murray. Steer clear of the guards and lights. Avoid sprinting around the guards too. They'll hear your footsteps. Yes. I promise. Yes. So running makes noise, which means guards will know that you're near, and they tend to turn around very quickly and then catch you, and then they start to attack you. Um, you don't want to fight the guards in this game. The guards in this game is kind of annoying to deal with. They're not like size 2 guards where you're, it's actually manageable to fight them. Here, you might actually die. Like I should have totally seen you. Alrighty, so around here, I believe there is a collectible for us to pick up. Now, um... These collectibles you're going to be finding in the hub worlds and in every mission. You can pick them up whenever you want if you decide to replay a mission, which you are able to do. I don't think I explained that in the review. But um, there are the masks, and there's, I believe, 50 of them. 50 or 60 of them. And uh, our goal is to make it on top of this roof, which we're going to be collecting in a second. We collect all of them, so no worries. Uh... Yep, that's not good. Seems like we got a little heavy. I'm a little out of practice. Maybe we just gained some weight, Sly. I don't know. Uh, no, all good here, Bentley. Okay, looks like you're going to have to find another way up. Use that ledge to move around to the front of the museum and stay out of that security light. I think I can handle that. All right, I think this is the ledge I was thinking of. I can't believe the security of this place. This better be worth it. So these rat guards, you don't see them. Uh, they don't have like their own special location, but they do have their own items. And there's gonna be three. This is the 500 item, the apple juice, which is super lucky for me to pick up. I don't normally pick that up. They also have like a cheese, and they have someone. I think they have like a smoke bomb. 
something. There's like 100, 200, and 500 items for every level. Uh, and yeah, it, it's random, whatever you get. I don't know what like the percentages are. But uh, yeah, so I believe this is the corner I was thinking of where if you go around. So this is the conversation I was talking about. Seems like there is a Easy does it. cowboy, a greasy looking dude, and a third figure. I didn't get a good look at the third figure there. But it looked like she had an instrument or something. Well, anyway, on top of this roof is where we were talking about earlier. Um, there's going to be a Sly Cooper mask. So in order to do that, we're going to hop up here and then jump onto the greenhouse itself. And then watch out for this helicopter. And right down there is our Sly mask. So collecting Sly masks allow us to unlock uh, certain cosmetics that we are able to mess around with. And, oh, sorry, did I say 50 earlier? I meant 60. I knew it was 60. In my mind, I was like, it's 60, it's not 50. <laughs> 60. Um, and uh, we'll be able to, to check them out. We're going to be showing off all of them throughout the playthrough until, like, the last video. The bonus is where I show off, like, the last few things. Um, but, yeah. So, I, like I mentioned earlier, I got super lucky with that mouse uh, enemy, the little rat trooper enemy, where you had the 500. Normally, I don't get the 500. I usually get like three, 300 coins around uh, or so in this level. But the fact that I got that 500 so early uh, was really nice because then I got to pick up every item with, without even like trying. It was great. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna hop over here where the mission dictates. Sure looks like somebody spent a fortune on this place. Yeah, some some rich dude. What kind of surprises they have inside. Yeah, probably like the standard affair, maybe like laser beams or guard dogs or sound activated platforms. I don't know, I'm trying to think of like Splinter Cell stuff, you know, cameras, stuff like that. Cameras? That could have been like a Sly Cooper thing to worry about. This would just be spotlights, wouldn't it? Alright, so this guy has the key, which is what we're going to be grabbing right here, the skylight key. And we're gonna just murder him. Oh, okay. That's not what I meant, but it's fine. He's dead. I killed him before he could even realize that I killed him. That's all that matters, honestly. You know. Sorry, too. That would have been an instant fail, but it's it's okay. I'm actually kind of glad that just murdering him is all I need to do. I don't have to like triangle him and then sneak attack him. Uh, what we got in here, boys? Let's see. Opening up the skylight. Ah, laser grid. Classic. Okay, Bentley, I'm in place. Let me know when you shut down the security system. Patience, Sly. You can't rush greatness, and I'm about to code a hacking masterpiece. Bentley. The brains. <laughs> so, Bentley's a playable character in this game. He has his standard the attack. I was in these sewers, I but was he just a also... That's weird. Um... But you can also check the map, too, if you hit the select button. You can see, like, the layout and stuff. Um, but on top of that, Bentley can double jump. But his double jump, oddly enough, gets overridden sometimes with his hover, which we'll be seeing in a second. Triangles, bombs, uh, that little radius around the bomb is how uh, how big the blast is going to be. So here's my glide. It uses the meter to use, to use up. Um, don't get hit by any of your bombs. They are instant kills. You will die. You can drop multiple bombs. The, I was remembering an ability that you get later where you can um, kick your bombs. I was trying to figure that one out. You can throw bombs with the L1 button. Okay, all right. There we go. Uh, press triangle to throw them, and they stick onto the walls, and then eventually they'll blow up. Well, that was a blast. <laughs> um, I'm going to show off the double jump slash hover. Because again, it gets overridden most of the times. He does have a double jump. <laughs> he does have a double jump, which that's that was a double jump right there. 
Uh, you'd be surprised at how hard it is to pull that off, because it usually just glides. Uh, and you tend not to gain any height with the glide, too, so... We're just going to stick this bomb right onto the wall and watch it explode. We have beauty. That's a big Coins jump. are shared between I the entire crew. The hover pack here. Just so Thank you know. You technology. It's not like Bentley has his own money and Sly has his own money, but we all share Great. just that money. Uh, in this game, if you put on your Binocucom... Oh, I'll put up these a little picture there. The L1 uh, Bentley's darts share then the attribute of the ammo. So, um, the yeah, shut up. Right <laughs> well, so, uh, like I was saying, the the Binocom's darts, they they share the attributes the of the ammo. So, like, let's say, for instance, right now, Bentley has explosive ammo on, so his bombs blow up, but his darts blow up also. He doesn't just have access to sleep darts in this game. Those are a separate ammo that we'll be getting at the end of this video. Uh, right around this corner, the second alleyway, we're going to pick up our second mask. I think this is like the only level I can think of where there's two masks in a mission. Uh, to my knowledge, I think. And just like that, we... Oh, we fell into the water again. <laughs> And just like that, we are able to make it to the end of this subway system, or this sewer segment. Hold on, we're, we're actually almost there. I'm so used to playing like the, the game with all the upgrades. I'm so used to seeing just Bentley boost around places. <laughs> Alright, one more bomb should do it. Yeah, beauty. Hop it down here. your close shaves how's that security system coming bentley uh, great perfect i'll be done in a jiffy uh -huh. <laughs> hopping down here opens up another area for us watch out for these laser grids these laser grids are instant kills uh and we're about to finish off the level so we jump down there we're into the second pipe we're about to finish off the level by I starting our sewer, first Tom. of many any hacking mini games. Also, Bentley can steal things and then put palms in people's pockets. It's still phenomenal. For a hack so we're gonna be doing the hack attack <laughs> system cracker, I believe, is the the uh, the first ability. Um, not first ability, the first coding thing. And this is our standard hacking mini game. Left analog stick moves, right analog stick shoots. Uh, super duper simple. Super duper simple. Super duper fun. Um, probably my favorite one of all the hacking mini games. These firewalls are pathetically easy. They have no health at all. Um, barely even an inconvenience, honestly. Not sure why they even bothered having the firewalls in this game. Because you kind of shred right through them. Even more so in Sly 3. Like, Sly 3, they went quick, but... Like, you're, you're hardly ever under attack in this game where the firewalls will ever be bothering you. Um, so, System Cracker has changed since Sly 2 and 3. Um, Sly 4 has the ability to change your car. There are three separate cars. This is the second one, the Panzer Code. And the Panzer Code can break these pink crystals, and there's also, like, pink buttons that we'll be seeing later on in the game. Uh, it has a very short distance, but it does blow things up very quickly. We got to open up this thing real quick. We can't pick up keys with the panker, panker, with the panzer code. You can only do so with the shell code or the green code. Um, look, at look at that, the firewalls just instantly went away. Like, there's no point in the firewalls in this game. I don't know why they put them in here. Um, so we're going to pick that up, open up the door, and finish up the mission. The other code is a speeder code. We'll be seeing that a little later. Maybe in like the next mission or level or something. But you, there's going to be a lot of hacking games. There's a lot of hacking games in this, in this game. Murray, the broad. 
So, Murray. Uh, I had a lot of things to say about Murray in, <laughs> in the review, but for starters, Murray has a standard attack. I don't like the animation for his attacks, they just look weird. He has a double drum, and he has a thunder flop, which can be activated with square or triangle. Uh, Murray's circle allows you to pick people up. This guy has a item, which is really devious, because when you hustle people for their shmoney, uh, ben Murray can't pick up their item in this game. It's it's a it's an upgrade that you need to grab. So that was such a dirty fucking thing that the developers did. Um, I really don't like that actually. The fact that both Sly and Bentley can steal things, but Murray can off the bat. Like it was weird, and in Sly Three it was weird too, because Murray could steal things off the bat in that game, but Bentley needed a gadget to do it. Like it wasn't just like a, a thing. So I don't know why they kept doing that. It's really weird. I didn't like that. Uh, but yeah, Murray being the brawn, he usually is just used to beat up the enemies. Uh, that's his triangle button. His hold down triangle button move uh, to spin. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think of the three, Murray in this game is probably my least favorite to play as. Uh, which really sucks because in the earlier games, he definitely was my favorite. Fists of Flame made him like such a, a havoc. Uh, Infernal Flop made him like an area of effect master. The fact that he can steal things while killing people was super duper fun. The In 3 he had the ball which allowed him to be able to reach heights that even the other two couldn't do. Like Murray was a blast to play in the older games. In this game, like they shipped him away. He's kind of bare bones. Uh, it's not fun. Murray has weapons too, or rather ammos too, but they're all the same thing. Like there, It doesn't feel like Murray was a character that they really put all their thought into. You know, there was there was like a nuance to size two and three for the Murray, but in this game there was they didn't really do much. Um I like it when some games streamline things. Like the controls for instance, if something was cumbersome, but this game they streamlined Murray's whole moveset and it it's lame. Not that fun. So it looks like uh Oh right this moment. So Murray gets overwhelmed quite a bit. Now at first when I was a kid when I first saw this I thought this was kind of cool where you get to mash the button and then like just you know like explode and take people off but this is such like a waste of time. <laughs> like I don't know if the Murray would really find himself doing that. Uh, and so, <laughs> the broccoli. <laughs> so, the Murray has the ability to pick things up and throw objects. Um, so any small objects, like chairs, boxes, barrels, whatever, pick them up and you can throw them. Um, in slide two, these boxes usually took two or three things to break, but in this game, they're just one, so it's like... What's the point? I guess, like, it's... Like, not challenge someone's attacking me. security system is down. You're all clear. Great. I'm going in. What the? You didn't really think you were gonna get away with it, did you, Ringtail? Hey, Carmelita! Oh, funny meeting you here. Sly Cooper, you no good lying thief! I'm locking you up for good! Sorry, gotta take a rain check. I'll call you. Good evening, this is Sly Cooper. I'd like to request a ride. You, Sly! Now quit dancing around and get down here! We're in the van and ready to roll! Au revoir. Let's hit it! Buckle up, boys! So we can control the van. I didn't bring this up because this is like the only time in the game that you get to do this. Um, but this game has a lot of those like little... QTE moments where it's like, press circle to interact with this thing. It's like, what the fuck? Just show me him picking up. <laughs> What's the point? Um, like, they're, they're silly and unnecessary. Relax, Sly. 
just put the dagger in the receptacle. Perfect. Isotopic decay calibrated. Adjusting fusion synthesis. Anytime you want to punch it, Murray. You got it, chum! Do not slow down, Murray! I never do! Whoa! Well, and that is Sly Thieves in Time. <laughs> this should be an interesting video. Um, I'll see you guys after the cutscenes, though. Well, what else can I say about Carmelita? As you can see, our relationship is complicated. And I just succeeded in upgrading it to hazardous. I certainly wasn't expecting her to crash the party. She'd been so busy with her latest case, I never thought she'd have her eye on me. In fact, I'd kind of been counting on it. But then, I should have known better than to underestimate Inspector Carmelita Fox. As much as she liked having fun, Carmelita was serious about her police work. And now, I had a lot of explaining to do. But the plan was in motion, and there was no stopping now. Even though I was thinking I'd need the time machine just to patch things up with Carmelita. Before the heist, we'd recruited our disco-loving, scuba-diving friend, Dimitri Listo to look after the Thievius Raccoonus. Because it was irreplaceable and the only guide we had, it was far too risky to take the book through time with us. Bentley had even invented a communication device to allow us to contact Dimitri no matter where or when we traveled. It was a perfect situation, since it allowed him to update us on any changes to the book while limiting our exposure to his fashion critiques. Everything was happening so fast. The past few days were just a blur. But as we howled through the time vortex, I realized we were in for a very long trip. We needed to locate Ryuichi Cooper, Master Ninja, and Master Chef. According to the Cooper clan history, Ryuichi Cooper was actually the inventor of sushi. After creating this delectable dish, he opened a sushi restaurant, which, while very prosperous, also provided the perfect cover for a ninja. When we got to Japan, it was obvious something was very wrong. What should have been a peaceful village was more like a heavily patrolled military base. We located Ryuichi Sushi Restaurant only to find it shut down and under guard. Things got worse when Bentley discovered that Ryuichi was locked up in a new high-security jail, allegedly for serving bad sushi to the Shogun. It all sounded like a pretty tough piece of fish to swallow. We needed to get to the bottom of the situation, and the first order of business was getting Ryuichi out of prison. Sly Cooper and the gang in... Turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. Do 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 do. Reminds me of a uh, Beverly Hills Ninja. If anyone's seen that movie. <laughs> so uh, there's gonna usually be a lot of a lot of moments where if you go into ThiefNet, you unlock a bunch of upgrades, and you only realistically need 400 coins. But uh, to get the paraglider, which is gonna be essential, you hold R1 to while jumping to fly. El Dropo combo is or elbow dropo combo whatever is just a new combo move for the Murray, and then you get Bentley's sleep ammo, which we'll be showing off when we play as the Bentley, uh, whenever we get a chance to play as the Bentley. But for now, I will see y'all in the next one, uh, where we're going to be taking on turning Japanese and doing some recon. See y'all then.